So for a patient with newly diagnosed BRAF mutant metastatic melanoma, there are many options that are reasonable treatment considerations. Um, you could certainly consider a BRAF-directed therapy, and in that realm we have two approved combinations. I think most commonly, dobrafenib and trametinib, the BRAF and MEK inhibitors are administered, but colbimetinib and uh, vemurafenib are also available in that space. And even a third combination of encorafenib and binimetinib will be coming soon. Uh, so a BRAF-directed approach would be very reasonable. On the other side are the immunotherapies, and we know that the approved checkpoint immunotherapies in this space would be anti-PD-1 antibodies with pembrolizumab or nivolumab, as well as ipilimumab, and or combination with nivolumab and ipilimumab. So many different options that could be considered, and it's hard to say that one is necessarily better than another given that we don't have head-to-head -head randomized evidence. So on this level, uh, in this question, it would really be a patient-level consideration of the pros and cons of each approach. Obviously, targeted therapy is attractive. It works quickly. It's generally speaking pretty well tolerated. Now, that being said, immunotherapy with anti-PD-1 monotherapy, quite effective, low toxicity, but patients do have to come in to get the infusions every three weeks. Uh, ipilimumab, nivolumab, perhaps having the highest response rate um, in terms of immunotherapy and potential benefit for long-term, but associated with a higher degree of toxicity. So this is really a conversation with the patient about what their goals are and what their risk and benefit tolerance really is going to center on. Um, I think any of them could be an appropriate option in terms of choosing. Um, in a patient like this who has a low volume of disease, a good performance status, low LDH, target therapy would certainly be very reasonable. But then at the same time, those clinical factors are likely to suggest the patient will do well with other therapies as well. Um, so monotherapy PD-1 versus the combo could also be considered. One active question in the field is should we be doing PDL one testing to help guide the choice of immunotherapy? Most melanoma oncologists think that that's really not that valuable at the current time because most patients with melanoma end up being PDL1 positive. Um, and really, the consideration probably centers better on the patient's ability to tolerate the increased toxicity of giving ipilimumab and nivolumab combination. So in my practice, I tend to give anti-PD-1 as a monotherapy first and sequentially administer ipilimumab if the patient progresses on anti-PD-1. Um, and I do that because I think the upside of response rate of 40% for PD-1 monotherapy is pretty good, low toxicity. Um, and there are clinical trial data that suggest that sequential therapy may approximate combination therapy, but certainly this is an area of argument amongst oncologists and again a patient level decision. So in choosing a frontline therapy, if a patient has a BRAF mutation and chooses BRAF targeted therapy, that can be a very effective therapy over a long period of time. And certainly in my practice, I have had patients who have gone on for years on that therapy. We even have some patients that were on the original clinical trials and they're still going doing very well. And one wonders whether or not they really truly need to continue, but you can imagine for a patient with metastatic melanoma, they're not in a hurry to stop the treatment that's given them five years of survival and so on and so forth. So these Therapies are generally speaking well tolerated. I describe them to patients sort of like antibiotics, I meaning they're pills that you take, tend to work quickly to shrink the tumor. Usually they're quite well tolerated, although they can have some side effects. And so this is where thinking about the different combinations can sometimes make a difference. So I think probably most commonly people give the brafenib and trametinib as the combination up front. Um, most people have the most familiarity with that combo. The big toxicity that we worry about with that combination is really a pyrexia syndrome or fever syndrome. It can be somewhat occult, although sometimes can be obvious, meaning patients usually start out with the sensations of maybe fatigue, maybe some chills. By the time they start to get to fevers, it's a little bit cats out of the bag because we can start to see relapsing fevers to like 105 over and over and over, and that can be debilitating for patients. So we really want to educate people up front to look for that toxicity, and as soon as they feel anything, report it and stop the drugs and just let them wash out. For reasons we don't really truly understand, usually when we take that approach of a washout, the toxicities tend to go away, and when we restart the drugs, it doesn't come back. So it's unclear why that happens. But that's really the big one we look for with the brafenib trametinib. The other approved combination is vemurafenib and cobimetinib. Uh, also highly efficacious, very similar clinical data. Toxicity profile is slightly different, however, in that we see more cutaneous or skin toxicities, so more rash, a little more sun sensitivity at that combination, as well as a little bit more GI uh, side effects. So the cobimetinib can be a little more rough on the stomach. Which one is the correct? one for an individual patient, again, will probably go back to their tolerance of those side effect profile. If you have an older individual who might do much more poorly if they get the fevers, you might consider vemurafenib, codimetinib, but for a lot of patients, they start with the brafenib and trametinib and take it from there.